Hi again, everyone. So welcome to the third and final day of Tima. Can you guys believe you made it here? Yes. Some of you are meditating, so I hope this will wake you up. Um, but this morning, we have a lot of exciting programs planned. We have great speakers again. Um, and we also will hear from key uh, figures in Tsuchi here in the USA. We'll hear about how they uh, shaped the development of Tsuchi, how they uh, directed Tsuchi so that it, it is where it is right now. Um, and with that, um, we'll be having our first speaker soon, uh, Brother Stephen Huang. Okay, so many of you have had the opportunity to speak with Brother Stephen Huang over these few days. And then um, many of you probably heard him last night at the 30th anniversary party. So his story is very well known. He's the executive director of Global Volunteers here at Tsuchi Foundation, and he is the first CEO of Tsuchi USA. So his story is one that goes in the Tsuchi history books. So when he visited Taiwan seeking personal guidance, Dharma Master Cheng Yen requested that he begin Tsuchi here in the USA. He was a successful businessman, and with that request, he donated much of his wealth and his time to starting the first chapter here in 1989. So as many of you might know, one of his nicknames is Sixian Baba, which translates to Papa Stephen in English, and one of the reasons for that is because he is a founding father of Tsuchi USA. His journey has taken him across our nation and around the globe as he's led many disaster relief missions and disseminated the seeds of Tsuchi. And with that, I would like to welcome Brother Stephen Huang. Beloved Master Zheng Yan and all masters in Hualien aboard, and all the brothers and sisters from all over the country. Good morning, everybody. It's so happy and grateful to see all you here. Just like last night, originally I don't have uh, the schedule to get on the stage to speak to the audience last night, but uh, they say, you have to. So, okay, I have to. So when I get on the stage, and I saw Mayor Maurice there, and I'm thinking about 30 years ago, or even 45 years ago when I come to this country, knowing almost nothing. But now, after 40 some years, in the United States and all over the world, and in Tsuji family, 30 years. So many stories I want to tell you, but let me start with this forum first. In 1993, Dr. Lin Long and me, and we want to copy Taiwan Medical Mission. So we started the free clinic in Alhambra and with everybody's help, especially like Deborah. So we started. And then later on, we tried to carry out the mission worldwide. So we create Tima. You know, Tima means the flying horse all over the world, but in Chinese, that's different meaning, okay? Tian Ma Xing Kong means you talk about an hour and nobody knows what you are talking about. <laughs> that's Tian Ma Xing Kong, that's, you know. But Tima, this flying horse is flying to the people who they need our help, flying to the disaster area when a lot of people are suffering. So, Tsuji International Medical Association started. I, th I thought it's in um, Hawaii or Los Angeles, I forgot. But now, this organization grew up so much. 
I very much appreciate Dr. Lin and Master Cheng Yen's blessing. That's why we have this event. But I have started another history in 1998. Where? Afghanistan. Not too many people went to Afghanistan. But there's a picture I want to show you. Probably everybody knows or heard about the biggest standing Buddha in the world, which is this one in Bamiyang, Afghanistan. This is 1998. We created our mission after the earthquake killing so many peoples. And we worked together with Knightsbridge International, which is the Christian, small Christian charity. How small? Two people. Okay. Dr. James Laos and Sir Edward Artis. Through congressmen's introducing, we went there with our medicine, about 2,000 kgs medicine, especially antibiotics, to save lives. And when we arrived there, it's so sad to see women and children hiding in a lot of cage, which 1,000 years ago is all monks to chanting over there, self-cultivation over there, but now become refugees cave. And the gun is higher than the soldier because the soldier only 15 or 14. So many lame mice. You saw one eyes, one legs, one hands because Russian, they invade Afghanistan since 79 until 89. They withdraw, but they leave a lot of landmines over there. And we have to be very careful. And this is the sad story, starting in Afghanistan. One night, we were kidnapped by a warlord. So-called kidnap is not too hard because he won this, okay? But we already spent all our money and everything. So he said, we won't let you go until you get something. Luckily, I brought two satellite phones. So I think my colleague, Edward, called somebody, maybe in Washington, D.C., because we work together with Northern Alliances, which the leader before, probably everybody know him, Bin Laden. Okay, so next morning, the warlord treat us very, very nice, give us Coca-Cola, <laughs> coffee, and use his personal helicopters through to the borderline of Uzbekistan. Then we get out. Next time is when the Buddha blow up, it's empty. As of today, the Buddha is gone. According to the history books, there is four Buddha. Papa Buddha, 75 meters high. Mama Buddha, 37.5. Baby Buddha, 10 meters. And there's a sleeping Buddha, 100 meters, buried under the desert. And we saw three Buddha, but not the sleeping Buddha. So next time is when somebody or Bin Laden blow up New York, the World Trade Center, and bombed a lot of areas in Afghanistan. So we carry out another mission, the second time, 2002, to the area called Ibak. We're helping 300 some families of refugees. Why I started with Afghanistan? Thousands of years ago, it's a Buddhist country. But after a few hundred years, become Muslim countries. And they cannot tolerate a Buddha statue standing over there when the Buddha didn't say anything, didn't touch anything. So they use machine guns, all kind of artillery try to blow him up, but they couldn't because the whole Buddha statue is carved from the whole mountain. It's very hard to bring them down. So after September 11, Taliban, I heard they used thousands of thousands of dynamite. And a lot of people sacrificed, and finally they blow up 
the Buddha statue. So second time when I ready to go to Afghanistan, NBC interviewed me in New York. They asked me, how do you feel as a Buddhist about Taliban blow up Buddha statue? I say, I feel very sorry. They don't have to do that. But I'm not sad because what they blow up is just stones. The spirit of Buddha will never be destroyed. And this is the moral I want to tell you. <clears throat> Why we have hospitals in Taiwan, seven now. Master don't have to build any more hospitals. That's the government's job. Or rich or big corporations job. But why we build hospitals? Probably all of you already knew. We build schools. That's government's job. But we build schools because we want to have different kind of Tsuji culture or humanitarian culture into medical system, into educational system. Some of you maybe visited already in our Walnut campus. Even the small kindergarten, we only have like 175 students, but there's about 300, 400 people lined up trying to get in. Now I heard that even the wife just pregnant, they already registered. Why? Because they already knew the Tsuji school not only teach the knowledge, but also respect the parents, love the people, respect each other every day, every day, until they grow up. So that's why they were joined. So this is the moral, that's why we have Tima. The doctors usually, they are very high professional people, just like PhD. You know what PhD means? Permanent head damage. <laughs> Heng Huang say that, not me, okay. <laughs> I'm joking. So doctors sometimes, you know, especially in Taiwan in the old days, they are very, very much proud of themselves. Sometimes they didn't treat the patient as they're supposed to be. So Masters knows the situation at that time. Even you want to see a famous doctor, you have the specialty on the table, you have to give something. Or the guarantee money is a tremendous amount. So about 33 years ago, Master, through many, many obstacles, she built the first hospital in Hualien. Okay. Very hard, very, very hard. So right now, it's become very famous and almost known by a lot of doctors worldwide. i just tell you one example. One of our entrepreneurs, people call him the steel king of Indonesia. He happened to have a heart surgery in Mayo, Phoenix, just a few months ago. So after the surgery, very successful. So he went back to Jakarta and 30, 40 days, have to go back, come back to Phoenix to recheck. But he asked the Mayo's doctors, I'm really tired and he's pretty old, like 65 or 67. Can I recheck in other countries? Like, I don't want to say the country, okay? And the doctor or mayor in Phoenix say, only two areas we trust and we suggest you go. So where? Number one, Australia. Which is the second country? Taiwan. Wow, really? Really. So I'm shocked too. I'm shocked too. So, but it's a true story and it's a true thing. So I went back to Hualien and I tell Master, and Master said, please tell our doctors 
in our medical system in Taiwan. But I'm not trying to say Tsuji is number one or Tsuji is the best or Tsuji is no. But I'm proud of 33 years ago, Master really have the foresight to build and to encourage this kind of so-called Tsuji culture into medical system. So now all the doctors, no matter in Singapore or in Philippines and a lot of doctors worldwide here today in San Dimas, like Indonesia, especially Indonesia, next year our hospital, Tsuji Hospital, will be grand opening in Jakarta. And all our doctors become such a wonderful, loved to their patients, doctors. That's the difference. So this time, when I went to Indonesia to pay my last respect to uh, maybe the, the richest uncle, I call him Uncle Huang, okay? Uh, Cinemas, the founder of Cinemas Group. Uh, he was 100 years old, he passed away. So in the funeral, and Indonesia's customs in the funeral, they don't feel sad or they don't cry. They just kind of chanting each other, you know, have some drinking and then have some snacks and talk to uh, people or the family members just like a party. So I tell them a joke. A guy went to a pet shop, tried to buy dogs. But he saw three birds there, it's very expensive. First one is 500 US dollars, wow. Second one is 1,000 US dollars. The third one is 5,000 US dollars. So he forgot he wanted to buy dogs. So he asked the, the owner of the pet shop, why the bird is so expensive? Oh, you don't know, the first one, the birds can use all kinds of handphones. The second one, how come 1,000? He can talk all kinds of languages. But how about the third one, 5,000 US dollars? I don't know. The first one and second bird call him boss. <laughs> Why I say this to the, uh, to the uh, people in the funeral in Jakarta at that time? Because Uncle Huang taught me a boss a boss is not doing nothing, okay? But a boss don't have to do everything. If a boss is doing everything, then he's not a good boss. That's what I learned something. Especially right now, Tsuji Master is already 83. And Tsuji already 53 years now. So we have to go with the fashion or with the world. Right now it's AI, IT, you know. It's impossible for one people to do everything. So, everybody has to put on their own efforts to make Tsuji successful and strong. That's what we need. Every one of you, every one of you. Let me talk about in Russia. Last time, about a few months ago, I went to Moscow. Why? I've been waiting 15 years, trying to set up a Tsuji branch over there, but I have no connections. So a few months ago, wow, this lady, uh, she's from Beijing, and she taught Chinese in Moscow in Moscow University. So we connect with her, and I went over there, encouraged her to do Tsuji over there. And we find out, just like I thought, I said last night, there's more than 50% of single families. Unbelievable, why? They told me all kinds of reasons. But most of the reasons I heard is the men in Russia, they drink a lot, lot of vodka, okay? Maybe it's cold weather or something. So when they have a stress with the children, they have a problem, 
They just left the family, the home. Give to the mother or the wife to take care of the children. So, so many single families over there. So naturally, we already start to help some family now. That's what I say. This is the 98th countries we help in the world. And I try to do a lot more, if I could, with Master's Praising. Because I, I have to try to find more people in Moscow to start it, our charity work in Russia. Russia. The next country I'd like to, you to, to go is Mozambique, Africa. And probably you already heard from the CNN news or worldwide news. In March the 15th, around that time, there's a huge uh, uh, flood problems or hurricane or silicon or something. In fact, area is huge. Three countries, Mozambique, the hardest hit, Zimbabwe, and Malawi. And Malawi is the poorest country in the world. And Zimbabwe also. And Mozambique, I think, from the bottoms up, is about number five or number six. And I was in Mozambique again a few months ago. After the visit, I must say, my, maybe my last vow of my life is try to turn around the fate of Africa. So sad, you probably all know, all of, so many sad stories in Africa, and so many disasters, you know, even famines, diseases, drought, and now is this big flood, killing a lot of people. But the problem right now is millions of people without food, the famine, and then diseases. Cholera, you know, uh, so many things happening right now. That's why Master deployed me and the, another team. Go first, check it out, see what we can do. But with a lot of our Chinese friends' help from Beijing, there's a lot of entrepreneurs in Mozambique, in Zimbabwe, and Malawi. We can ask them to help us, to give us a base. So the transportation, a lot of things, you know, the storage room. So we need that. Again, why master in Taiwan? And she never left Taiwan. She never. All her 83 years, she never left Taiwan. But her heart is all over the world. So compassion, so mercy. And that's what the disciple of us, like us, we we'll try to carry out the mission for her. But actually, it's not for her. It's for ourselves. Just like when I started to um, kind of help Indonesian entrepreneurs about 20-some years ago, I tell them a story. I say, by helping yourself, helping ourselves is helping everybody. And by helping everybody, is helping yourself. A lot of rich people before in Indonesia, they only take care of themselves and their, their family. <coughs> Excuse me. That's why in 1998, there's a riot, killing, rape, robbing, 2,000 some Chinese. It's a riot, terrible story. Again, I was there with the team, we tried to help them. So master started to teach all these rich people in Indonesia, the Chinese people. You live on their ground, under their skies, making their monies. You have to take care of their people. I know Dr. Hinky here and a lot of our Indonesian friends, they know the stories. And right after that few years, 2002 in Jakarta, 60% of Jakarta was flooded. And after three months, it's still flooded. A poor area is still flooded, but rich area is dry already. So again, Master deployed me to over there. So again, she called a lot of rich Chinese together and said, please help them. So we started to build new homes, move a lot of 
poor people along the Anke rivers. Anyway, it's a big story, a big job. We get it done. The president of Indonesia came, Miss Megawati came. She's very surprised. And we accomplished this very hard mission in Jakarta. 1998, a lot of people was killed. The Chinese people was killed. Anke River means red stream river because hundreds of years ago, it's a Dutch, Dutch colony. A lot of Chinese were killed and throw bodies into the river. But you know the Anke River right now called Tsuji Anke River in Indonesia because we turned around a lot of people's fate. A lot of children, when I was there, 2002, is picking trashes to eat near their homes. But now, we educate them, now they become doctors, become businessmen. You can prove to them, right? We saw that the kids all grow up, turning around. Master in Taiwan, but she can do a great job in Indonesia, through you, through us. That's the moral of Suji. 21st centuries, people cannot say, oh, we only take care of our home area or our city. The whole world is connected to each other, even people. So we have to help each other, but with what? With our own heart, just like to take care of our patient with our own family. To treat the patient as ourselves, as our mothers or our children, with heart. I just think, think about one story. In the old time, as a king, he said, I want to pick a number one, number one people, a cane, a cove, a wood, as a mice, mouse. Now give him a lot of gold. So they're the three best ones after uh, the competitions. The three one. Number one is carving the mouse really good. And number two, not as good, but really like a mouse. And number three, not really like mouse, but look like mouse. So everybody think the number one people should be the champion, right? But the king pick up number three. Why? Because after a lot of judges say number one is the champion, the number three people again oppose. Who should judge the mouse is look like 100% like mouse? Who is the best judge? The cat. Right? The cat should be the, the best judge. So the king agreed. So bring the cats, there's the three mouths cut from the wood. Immediately they catch the third one. Why? The third guy used fish bone. <laughs> Smell. The moral is, the third guy, you can tell him smart or wise, but I think he really used his heart to put it into that fishbone mouse. It's just a story, okay? There's a lot of stories. But like myself, last night I say, before I only know how to make money or maybe how to control my employees and let them have a good life. Maybe hundreds of them, maybe thousands of workers who made, in, who is made uh, the blue jeans for me to sell in the United States. All the real estate, we buy some, we sell some, we make the difference. I just try to make money or even the banks. But after 
my eldest brother, who is 13 years older than me, passed away in 50, age of 54, so young, and started waking me up. Now it's our generation can be passed away, not the last generation. That's why I went to Hualien to meet masters. And one day, she said, Stephen, are you a vegetarian? I said, yes. So if I give you 500 NT, that's Taiwan dollars, would it be enough for you one day? And I calculate, yes, because I only need 80 NT for a meal. So three meals a day, 240. So after two seconds, I reply to master, yes, I still can give you 260. Then comes the teaching from master personally. So if enough for you a day for 240 NTs, why you are so busy looking for other monies? Enough is enough. Wow. I could not sleep since then. Enough is enough. In Chinese, busy means mang a. Xin wang. Your heart dead. Look, so many people looking for money, money, money. Then just so, 鸟为食亡,人为财死啊. The birds die because of the food. People die because of the money. And if you have enough, why are you looking or chasing after money? Money has four legs. People only have two legs. You never can catch up with them. So in Buddhism, a people so rich, yes, you have to work hard and smart, But the, the best, best uh, reason teach by Buddha is you have a fortune in your life. And that fortune is built up. You are maybe last generation or last, last, last generation. Just like this generation. All of you, all of us, we do good deeds. We help people. We donate our money. We sacrifice our time. We give, we give, we give. So next life, you receive, you receive you receive after you spend all your deposit in the bank. So you have to continue to deposit, to deposit, to deposit. And that's a true story. See, so many people work so hard, but they can only survive with three meals a day. But so many people in this world, they were born by the golden spoon in their mouth. They don't have to do next, nothing. And immediately they become billionaires. Why? That's why I say there must be a reason for that. Not only work hard and not only smart, no. It's because, well, you can say fate, but don't just superficially Believe in fate. You can change your fate. Just like a lot of fortune tellers tell me long time ago, I only have 49 years to live. My, my brother was died when I was 42. And when, they, when I took my uh, uh, sister-in-law uh, to, to see a lot of fortune tellers, at that time I'm not joined Suji yet. So I'm kind of superstitious. A lot of fortune tellers say, oh, Stephen, you only have 49 years. So I'm kind of upset at that time. But after 42, I joined Suji. I forgot the, 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 the whole things. But when I reach 52 years old, one day morning, I wake up, how come I'm still alive? <laughs> so I took out my passport. I turned on the pages. Wow. The age 49 I don't know why. Master asked me to go to Afghanistan, go to Africa, go to Europa, go to South America. 56 countries I've been mean, traveling by and carry a lot of mission. 56 countries in that year. That's why the evil or devil cannot find me. Today here, tomorrow there, fly over here, fly over there. 
So now, 71, I'm still alive, okay? I don't know the reason. I don't know the reason. You can tell those fortune tellers, they are not good. But I believe because I'm doing Tsuji, that's why I'm still here. And continue on. As long as I have the vow, I have the wish to carry out more mission. That's why I say, Master, let me go to Africa again. So I'm flying tonight to Mozambique. Not I'm trying to be a hero, no. Tsuji have no boss and no hero, okay? No. Through everybody's effort, not only one single pe person. But my connection with uh, people in Beijing, or um, I have a, some kind of a personal character, I can encourage a lot of bus businessmen or rich people in Africa for them to donate more money. <laughs> That's my specialty. It's very important. So yesterday, Frankie called me. He probably the second richest guy in Indonesia. Or maybe the richest, I don't know. He said, Stephen, I know you are going to Africa. How much you need? How much you need? Let me tell you. He's the one introduced uh, Dr. Lu from Cedar Sinai the other day, I mean, yesterday. So, as long as you make a wish, just like masters, make a big vow, and to give your great love. What does great love mean in English? Some of my American friends, what does your great love mean? I say, how about unconditional love? Just like your mother love you, your parents love the kids. Unconditional love. Ask nothing for return. And that's Tsuji. Compassion, relief. Tsuji means compassion, relief. Or people ask me, how you fit in Tsuji into Buddhism? I say, Buddhism in action. Buddhism in action. Tsuji is no NATO. You know NATO, right? N-A-T-O. No action talk only. <laughs> That's why you are here today. You act. You act. Just like you learn a lot of medical skills in the schools, but you practice. You love your patient. You save lives. That's medical in action. That's Tima. So Tima means flying horses to everywhere to save life. Because you guys are late, so ends my speech today. I will see you next year in Taiwan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you again so much to Brother Stephen for that wonderful presentation as always. And we are sure that with all the volunteer work he's doing, he'll live to be a thousand years old. So you'll see him all the time. Ever since he retired early and sold his business, it is clear that he has adhered to his vow to master to be her arms and legs. As you can see, he has traveled all around the world helping everyone. Because as he once said himself, we are a global village, so we are one family. And that will give you some significance to the sign language song that you often see Suchi volunteers perform at various disaster relief missions, outreaches, because no matter what, we are all one family. And we all put compassion into action. And that's what sets us apart from others. It's our pleasure to introduce our next speaker, who will be talking about international medical missions. Our next speaker used to be a doctor, an, an entrepreneur, a financial planner. Now he's a full-time volunteer of Tsuji Foundation since year 1997, because this is where he finds his passion and the meaning of his life. Here's a fun fact. Whenever Christina and I run into him and his wife, they are either about to go to an airport or just come back from an inter international medical missions. 
because he traveled from Taiwan to United States to Haiti to Mexico to many many countries with his missions. It is to bring Dharma Master Zhenyan's vision and love to everywhere and to serve those underserved area. Please join me in welcoming Dr. William K, the CEO of Tsuji Medical Foundation and Tima USA. Good morning. Did you have good sleep? Do you enjoy food? Then you are ready to action. We are no NATO. Well, today I would like to share our experience in international medical mission. Uh, we have been to many, many countries. So, uh, did you enjoy last night's program? Yeah, we do uh, present a review of disaster, international disaster relief, starting from 1994 until even now. So we have been many, many countries. I participated almost 80% of them. So it brings up a lot of memory. I will not spend too much time on each international mission, but I would like to choose Mexico as an example of international medical mission. And as you know, 2017, we have very big earthquake strike Mexico. And this disaster is very strange, it's very different, because the damage was not scatter in different areas, not only focus on one area. I think Brother Stephen Huang and his team uh, stayed there almost three months. Then we start disaster. I remember one day, Brother Martin called me and tell me and asked me whether we are ready to go for medical mission. I say, sure. Uh, we are going to go, but I need more information. And he told me, medical professional in Taiwan, a lot of superintendents are going to Mexico medical mission. Then Tima USA should support it. I said, sure, that's 100% we are going to support. But because it's a new place, we are only planning for one one outreach. For seven days, only one, I know is impossible. Not because of only one. I think it's going to be more because I have experienced follow Brother Stephen's step. He always give a lot of change. Brother Stephen always give a lot of uh, unpredictable action. So, after the mission, we end up not only one, we, we end up one per day. So that's really a tough mission. But after that, I feel very happy because we achieved quite a lot. So today I'm going to show you the experience about medical mission in Mexico. When we went to the first time in 2017 December, we went there for medical mission. After that, we asked the local volunteers, what is the most need? They told us is medical need. So medical become very important, especially after disaster. So we keep promise in April, we went there again. And we also keep promise for four times a year of medical mission. So that's, see the videotape. Okay.
we've been here December and before for the earthquake. After we have done all the distribution, we ask volunteer here and say, now, you are family, you are Ziji family. Tell us what you need the most. You know what they answer? They say, medical service. So we have uh, all together one week, seven days service. The first with Hohutala. Sí, efectivamente, después del sismo uh, es muy importante que todavía continúen los programas de ayuda y garantizar a toda la ciudadanía que no puede tener acceso a la salud. Martín nos decía, vamos a regresar. Vamos a regresar porque eh, queremos seguir ayudando. Cumplió su palabra, realmente la acción que está haciendo Suchi en ir después de, es algo que va a fortalecer muchísimo. Y créeme que lo recordamos. Well, we did keep the promise. We come back. And also, we really inspire of the local volunteer. After seven months, there are group, team of local volunteers. So in order to make a good international meeting, we need to have a scouting for preparation. And scouting has to prepare medical mission to examine and assess the location of the mission and also uh, all the participants will transform their lives because of the mission. Let's see the scouting. Not only the scouting doing preparation and local volunteer will help us. Let's see the videotape. Hoy venimos a, a dejar las cajas de medicamento que teníamos guardadas en la bodega desde diciembre. Entonces ahorita que se va a hacer la jornada de, de salud aquí en Jujutla, pues trajimos todos los, los equipos que necesitaban para poder realizarla. Muchas gracias a, a los de la Fundación Suchi que, que siguen dando la continuidad a toda la gente que, que tiene daños. Aquí está el venue donde el servicio médico va a estar. Así que we're going to have, I hope, at least we can serve 600 and more patients here. Suchi nos vino a transformar nuestra vida. Suchi nos dio esperanza. Nos sigue dando esperanza. Nos hicieron sentir como lo que somos, hermanos. We have achieved the uh, goal of inspiring people locally. And we're looking forward to see more and more people join this program. Hemos estado trabajando muy duro en en hacer la difusión y que la gente se entere que Suchi regresó y que se va a quedar en México. Today I'm here to train the general volunteer for orientation for tomorrow, the next two days. The idea of this trip that we come this time is to train local volunteer to slowly take over and manage the medical outreach. They recognize us. They say, they see Ziji are really doing something to help their people. So they were so surprised and so happy learning we're coming back. So, and we commit. We will keep coming back at least three, four times a year. Beautiful. So, after scouting, uh, we have to set up the medical mission. And please give a round of applause for Brother Martin and the scouting. And for setting up a medical mission 
involve a lot of volunteer, and especially local volunteer. And any representative from Mexico, please stand up. We would like to give a round of applause to you, Mexico. Thank you. Yeah, please sit down. A lot of people, starting from 2017. I want to show another video tape for setting up the the team. They need to wake up very early. And without local resident, local volunteers' help, we are not going to work like that. I arrive on the early morning of the 23rd. We're getting prepared all the equipment we need for this, this event. Estamos aquí en lo que le llamamos la Alameda de Jojutla. Fue ocupada como un albergue durante más de cuatro meses por gente que perdió absolutamente todo. Se ha convertido en un semillero de lucha personal y hasta emocional para poder salir adelante de esta situación. Mi esposa me dijo que eh, iban a venir unos doctores y ya quise venir. Me duele la rodilla. Excelente. Del trato y todo. La... La atención muy muy bien y son buenos médicos, son como especialistas, vienen lo mejor de lo mejor. Me inyectaron y me dieron medicina al dolor, si dolían. Siento que me va a ayudar. Sentí un piquetito muy leve, no me duele tanto. Ya este, las agujas me las quitaron, no me di ni cuenta. Ya no, este, ya no siento tanto dolor. La población recibe con mucho agrado, con mucho eh, amor, pero también con mucha esperanza a Tsuchi porque sabemos ya del tipo de labor que están haciendo. ¿no? Yo ya no me querían aguantar las rodillas, ya no, ya no podía caminar bien. Y me inyectaron, me inyectaron en el hombro derecho. Son muy amables, muy buenas personas todos. Y la atención médica, especialmente para mí que soy pobre. Y gracias a esta fundación lo obtuve gratis. Si nosotros no estamos bien, no vamos a poder ayudar a nuestra familia, no vamos a poder ayudar a nuestra ciudad en un proceso de reconstrucción que es muy, muy necesario para cada uno de nosotros. Por eso este tipo de jornadas son importantes. Ojalá eso haya siempre, en todos lados, en todo el mundo y que, que sea recíproco. Yo tengo fe de que voy a poder caminar bien con las, con las inyecciones que me pusieron porque ya siento efecto de ellas. Nos dan... este vida con la con, con todo me atendieron muy bien estoy muy contenta agradecida con ustedes porque les han permitido venir a este a este pueblo a darnos su ayuda y su enseñanza lo que ustedes aprendieron pues y nos los están dando Please give a round of applause. So, as you can see, pain is really a big issue for, for medical mission. Either headache, neck ache, chest pain, 
or backache, there are quite a lot of problems on pain. So if, if we can solve this problem, it's going to be fantastic. So Chinese medicine, acupuncture, become a very important part. And a lot of, originally, I don't think Latino will accept that. But once they experienced the acupuncture, and they found out acupuncture really worked, and there are a lot of people waiting in a big line and waiting for acupuncturist. So the first time we have four acupuncturists in the team, and later we have seven or even ten acupuncturists. So Chinese medicine is really very helpful for international medical mission. So please give a round of applause for Chinese medicine doctors. <laughs> and another group has really amazed me are all those young volunteer, college students. They came for help, become an interpreter, a runner, uh, they are really very helpful, and they are very cheerful, and really very, very helpful. So really touch my heart, or everybody's heart. So with love, comfort, support, and smile, so all the patients relieve their suffering already more than 50%. So that's the effect of International Medical Mission. I would like to show another videotape. Is, is it the right one? Okay. Yeah, sorry. This one. No? Okay. So it's all right, uh, skip that one. So I want to talk about dental service. As I remember in 1998, when I went to El Salvador because uh, earthquake, and we also have a medical mission. At that time, uh, not many dentists go this mission, and they told me how many, how many teeth they pull out, and they were very happy to help the patient suffering. But later, because I'm not dentist, I'm a medical doctor, so I thought this is the solution for toothache. But later on, when I talked to friend, dentist friends, I realized that's really not the solution, because if you pull tooth or it creates more problems in the future. So dentists always think to how to save teeth, not pull out the teeth. And with the equipment we have right now, we have portable x-ray, a better portable unit, so we can save teeth instead of pull it out. Although pull it out will save the toothache in urgent stage, but it's create more problem in the future. So let, let's look at the videotape about the dental service. Mexico for outreach medical missions for the third time now. Tengo epilepsia. 
Ayer vine a la cultura y hoy vine a quitarme un poco la calle. Me ayudaron bastante. Yo me enteré de ellos la vez que vinieron en diciembre. Dije, bueno, es una oportunidad para ayudar a mi comunidad y, y me nació hacerlo. Me gustó muchísimo cómo trabajan. Muy agradecido de todo corazón. Muchas gracias a la fundación. Han llegado mu muchos pacientes, gente humilde que necesita tratamientos que son a veces elevados para su presupuesto. This morning I had a three or four kids as a team request for these extractions, so we try to help them out. Los traje este para que los revisaran de sus de sus dientes. Tenían de leche todavía, pero pedacitos. Entonces le lastimaban mucho y le dolían. No podía dormir por el dolor que tenía. Al principio sí tenía miedo. Después de anestesia ni ya no sientes nada, pero sí te da un poco de terror. We have a volunteer doctors, doctors scissors. He donated a lot of dental material. Vine de a colaborar con la Asociación Suchi. Tengo mi consultorio particular. Nada más es cuestión de acomodarse, checar los tiempos y ustedes que nos brindan la ayuda, sí, estar a, a, la, a la par con ustedes. If we're going to be cooperated together in the future, it's not going to be a wonderful job. Los dentistas, me he llevado de maravilla. Son gente preciosa. Me han enseñado mucho. Yo recién egresé, entonces ha sido unos guías maravillosos. We've been here for several times. We are just like a friends. We hope uh, we can join uh, more events uh, this year for four times and I can come in more. Yo todavía no soy parte de los voluntarios de Suchi. Yo vengo únicamente cuando veo que hay convocatorias. Más adelante me gustaría tal vez enlistarme en partes voluntarias. Pues yo digo que sí está bien que hayan venido. Y estamos muy agradecidos con ellos porque gracias a ellos seguiríamos nosotros con el dolor o con algún otro problema. La verdad me hubiera costado dinero y yo ahorita soy madre soltera, no, no tengo los recursos así para llevarlos a un, a un dentista particular. Y pues ahorita estoy muy agradecida con esta gente que nos viene a ayudar, pues les doy las gracias de verdad. Se van felices porque recibieron no solamente atención médica sino atención personal. Eh, a, a los niños, sí, y a ustedes. Dios los bendiga a todos ustedes. Gracias por ayudarnos. Well, patients really appreciate the service we provide. So give a round of applause to our dental team. We are not only giving care on a specific side. When patient cannot come to the place, we will go to their place to take care of it. Originally, I thought we may not be able to do it because there are not so many people. But when I have experience, I know it works and also it provides really a tender, loving care. My personal experience is, one day when I go with Dr. Peter Chen, Dr. Peter Chen is a general surgeon. I am, I am a pathologist. So what pathologists can do in medical mission? Luckily, I have one year's surgical residence experience So I went with Peter Chen, and, and there was a lady who got a gunshot wound and with fistula on her abdomen. When we went there, we found out she really very, very sick and did not even want to say anything. And we asked and we care, we encourage her to smile, and later, uh, Dr. Peter Chen tried to clean the wound, and I helped him. And after finish everything, and I believe the lady really appreciate what we provide, and she said, I have one demand. I thought she wants something which we can give, but it's not. She said, 
I want to go out. But she is paralyzed. So I say, fine, get a wheelchair and help her in a very narrow place and push her out and with sunshine and push her surround her yard. After 10 minutes, she changed. She, she really gave a very high spirit and suddenly become very active and become like healthy patient. So that's really touched my heart. Originally, I thought I cannot do too much to a patient like that. But I was wrong. I was wrong. What our doctor, a medical professional, give the patient is not only physical care. It's mentally and also encouragement. Most importantly, is hope. So when we go there, really give them hope. And the lady changed to another person from very sick become like uh, almost recover. So that's give me a very good impression. Uh, international medical mission, any specialty can join. You don't need to be a, a primary doctor. Uh, I, I believe one of my friends are anesthesiologist, and he told me, what can I do in international medical mission? I said, sure, you can think about pain management. Even pathologists can do something. So I believe all the specialty can come to international medical mission. So let's watch the videotape on the next. Conocemos la, la monja, la madre Marta, porque estábamos, intentamos uh, ayudar a una escuela. Nos comentó que tienen algunas uh, madres que necesitan la atención, entonces fuimos a, a, a visitar. Uh, being a doctor, we were there invited to see the nuns who could not make it to us because of their underlying conditions, um, their um, elder, older age. Los doctores ver lo, uh, cómo diagnostica, cómo se encuentra, intenta ayudar, poner medicamentos. Very experiencing doing seeing uh, patients with such condition. The idea is to stay focused, uh, try to find out what are the roots of the problems. A lot of times uh, we do want to weight the benefits uh, and the downsides and then try to make a decision uh, to see if a patient needs medication. Al ver las madres ahí, uh, sentimos muy, muy tierno porque, bueno, también triste porque ellos son, son mayores. In uh, medical terms, uh, uh, sometimes we call it loving, tender care. Uh, you know, it's something that all the health providers should do. Uh, you know, we take care of the quote-unquote business, uh, you know, make the diagnosis, offer them the treatment, and then after that, uh, we, we do want to try to get personal. You know, it's, it's just being a human being. It's a, it's a very basic human-to-human uh, -human conversation. Final de todo, ellos regalan un regalito, como un polgán de corazón, y arriba ponen amor, en chino y también en español. Dejar ir las preocupaciones, solo así apreciarás la alegría de un corazón con pasión. Yeah, please give a round of applause for Dr. Dane and medical team. Dr. Dane, 
Dr. Deng is over there. Actually, he created a system for pharmacy part, a section, and we prepared the medicine. It's really solved the problem with bottleneck in pharmacy department. So for international medical mission, usually the bottleneck is in triage and pharmacy, but we solved that problem. So thank you, Dr. Dane. se vino a la jornada de salud. Es bien importante que la fundación siga viniendo porque se le da continuidad a un trabajo que se realizó con la comunidad. Una persona de los damnificados de 19 de septiembre nos apoyó la que es la fundación Sushi. Y también nos dieron lo que es una alcancía y ahorita que vino la fundación otra vez aquí a Xochimilco, aprovechemos a entregársela. I'm an acupuncturist. I'm supposed to reach out to people. Most of patients has a neck pain, knee issue, low pain. He venido aquí uh, en busca de ayuda. Desafortunadamente no me han podido ayudar, pero me voy agradecido de la atención que he tenido. But I know his nerve is damaged. But when I look at his pain, you know it's a really chronic. That's not much we can do. Pues han tratado de levantarme el ánimo y por eso me voy agradecido. Le hicimos la lucha, ¿no? The only thing I can do is I ask my helper to comfort him. Estaban enfermos, tienen gripa y bastantes flemas, entonces decidimos pasar porque decía que estaban unos doctores. Cuando me dolía la pancita, me dolía mucho. La que me dio las gomitas me dijo que cada día me coma una. I worked as a nurse for 46 years. And I don't want to waste my experience and uh, my knowledge just sitting at home. So I want to come out and help people. And I know there's such a need everywhere in the world. We fill the prescriptions and explain to them how to use the medicine, how often, what the side effects might be. Suchi is my favorite organization because I love how respectful they are to everyone, not just to each other, but to the people coming for help. Sentirse con otras formas de pensar y de actuar de la demás gente nos agrada. La hojita que me regalaron, aquí está mi living. No voy a hacer. Ah. Mi hija tiene 10 años y, y va a ser voluntaria este día. Vengo a ayudar a la gente y a ser voluntaria para que hagamos un mundo mejor. Es una semilla que, que la vamos a cultivar para que sea familia Suchi. Orgullosamente estoy desde el primer día que llegaron a México la Fundación Suchi. Soy el chofer y poco a poco me fui involucrando en la fundación y me hice voluntario. Todos te tratan de igual a igual, somos hermanos todos. Es algo hermoso. Una familia nos damos gracias. Well, people ask me, what is the impact? Actually, that is the impact. We are not only taking care of sick, we really like to inspire people. And all the local residents and patients are willing to donate 
even a penny or a peso, doesn't matter the real value of the coin, but really a, a love, a loving, tender heart. So I would like to wrap up a medical mission. I think after the mission, we will invite all the provider and the volunteer to share their experience. Every experience touch everybody's heart. That's the effect. That's all also the impact. That's watch the videotape. Hoy es el cierre, es un curso que se le da a la gente de cómo trabaja la Fundación Suchi. Suchi always uh, to have sharing after the mission. So all the participants will share their experience and tell everybody what they are thinking. Tengo un video de hecho de la primera entrega que yo estaba sentada, pero porque Martín estaba sin algo, que ahorita vamos a ver. Eh, me dijeron que necesitaban intérpretes. Porque yo siempre he dicho los límites no están en el físico, están en tu mente. Estos días mi experiencia ha sido fabulosa y ha sido una oportunidad porque te das cuenta que tienes la posibilidad de ayudar. Aunque yo tengo una limitación física, eso no me detiene para apoyar a más personas. I'm not selfish. I do it for others. I have been in Suji for more than 25 years. I still feel very touched and also I, I, I can see the hope because young people in Mexico are really getting the point. Sentir el amor por cada una de las personas que están aquí, de los médicos, de los voluntarios, y aunque uno esté cansado, eso se te olvida porque sabes que estás haciendo algo bien y algo positivo. Muchas personas piensan que por tener una limitación física, tú nada más tienes que tienes ese derecho a recibir. Eso no es cierto. Con lo poco que tenemos, podemos apoyar. Es un regalo que te llena el corazón, que te llena el alma. Me siento muy contenta, muy feliz, porque yo prefiero dar que recibir. From medical mission, we can only take care of physical part, but for mentally and spiritually, we really need uh, people who are coming this area to behave to touch people's heart. Sé que es eh, un hasta pronto porque van a volver y eso es algo que me emociona muchísimo. Agradecerles un poquito todo lo que ellos han hecho por nosotros. Inclusive ellos siendo voluntarios nos hacen sentir especiales a nosotros. La labor de Suchi aquí pues yo te puedo decir que es muy grande y va a ser demasiado grande porque la gente ya cree en Suchi. Se habla de Suchi y la gente sabe que Suchi viene a ayudar. As you can see, every participants are very happy, although they are tired, they did not have enough sleep, but they have high spirit and very happy. So what is the future goal? We, we know they have need, and they need medical doctors to help. They need equipment, they need medicine. But the most important thing they need is hope and the love. If we bring love and hope over, they will learn it, they will help themselves. So we are planning to do train the trainer, health education, pain management, 
and volunteer training. I think the only way to help them, to really teach them to understand they can help themselves with other people's help from outside, I think we can make it and make the environment better for themselves. Certainly, we will provide medicine and equipment, and importantly, we want to inspire local medical professionals and also form a local team up, and hopefully, we accompany them and grow it. Please join us, join us and just do it. Please give a round of applause whoever joined the medical mission. And the next mission is in April to Mexico. <laughs> and in June, we are going to go to Ecuador and also Paraguay. So we have a lot of international medical mission. I really want to invite you to join us, and I guarantee you will feel very content and happy. Thank you very much. So it all started from one sincere question, what do you need? And because of you and you, we can make medical service available for those underserved areas and deliver what those patients are needing the most. Thank you, Dr. William K. for those beautiful and inspiring sharing and stories from international medical missions. Our third and final speaker for this morning is Brother Poen Yen. He's an accomplished leader, and he, since 2017, he's been the CEO of Tucci Charity Foundation. He was formerly the CEO of Microelectronics uh, Corp, and now he's dedicated all his time to Tucci. He's long had a career in sustainable management, and he's focused on environmental protection. And this is closely aligned with Tucci's eight footprints. His work in this area has earned him many accolades throughout the years. So I'm delighted to welcome Brother Poen Yen. Uh, good morning. I'm so glad. Finally, we come to last session. And I'm more even glad you're still here and awake. So uh, today, I'm going to share the, uh, another a very important but a kind of serious topic. This is uh, uh, Global Risk and Sustainable Development. If you go to the, uh, surf the internet, go to the NASA, and you can check up this. There are one page showing the vital signs of our planet. They use uh, five indicators, including uh, the atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration and the global surface temperature. And the Arctic ice area decre decretion. And the uh, ice sheets in terms of its weight. And the fifth one is the sea level rise to reveal how our planet doing. Unfortunately, 
for all those indicators, the atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration is going up. The global temperature is going up. The area of the Arctic ice is decreasing. The ice sheet, the weight loss is increasing, and the sea level is rising. So we look up the uh, atmospheric uh, carbon dioxide concentration for centuries or millennia has never been going up more than 300 ppm. However, after industrial revolution, the carbon dioxide is going up. The carbon dioxide is a major greenhouse gas emission. And the, after 1913, it's the first, for the first time, it's going up more than 300 ppm, especially in the latest 50, 60 years. We can see it's ramp up very steep. If we zoom in this box, the after 1960 to 19, uh, 2019, this year, and we can see the carbon dioxide concentration is still going up. <clears throat> in 2017, uh, the, for the first time of the human history is going up to more than 400 ppm. That's a serious problem. And this chart showing the countries contribute the carbon dioxide emission most. And for the, from the history, you can see that the curve is ramping up especially in the latest 50, 60 years after the Industrial Revolution. And China contributes the most. Secondly, United States. Of course, China has more population than any other countries in the world. But if you look at the, the that is a total uh, carbon dioxide emission. If you look at the total greenhouse gas emission, the China contributes the most, secondly, United States. However, if we uh, look at the, the greenhouse gas emission per capita, Australia contributes the most, is in the number one place. United States, the second place. China is even below the average, of the world average. That is in the green box. And uh, the IPCC report released uh, just two months ago indicates we need to control our, those greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. The dotted purple dotted line is our target. We should control below 450, still going up. But we need to control below 450 ppm. If you look at this chart in the right-hand side, we are all above this target right now. And this is... Um, uh, global surface temperature after the, the Industrial Revolution, 1880. You can see the chart is going up. And this is from the NASA. This is relatively uh, to the average of the global temperature between eight 1880 to 2080, 2018. And you can see that the, this is clearly indicate 
global warming is happening. No doubt. And uh, we are already, the average global surface temperature is already rise above near one degree Celsius. When we're talking about the 1.5 or 2 degree limits, we are already above one degree. If you look at um, the so-called uh, disaster event worldwide, and this is um, the, the chart, bar chart of disaster events since 1980 to uh, 2018. You can see the number is increasing. And we compare the global surface temperature like this. You can see how correlated the global surface temperature with a so-called natural disaster events. So this is something we need to concern. So that's why in the January, the UN, IPCC, the inter uh, uh, governmental climate change, something like that. I forget the IPC stands for. In the meeting, they have new edible case. Its global temperature is projected, projected to rise to 1.5 degrees C by 2030. This chart shows the uh, um, if we if we uh, look live our daily life as usual, then it will go to 4.5 degrees C by the end of this century. And the current proposal to mitigate those greenhouse emissions has been taken, and it will go to the 3.5 degrees C, still far above the, our goal, the 2 degrees C limits. And now, the new target is 1.5 degrees C limits by 2030, even tighter, stringer than the previous uh, Paris Agreement on Climate Change. And this is IPCC's uh, projection. And if we can control, and this is, uh, the fund is kind of small, the CO2, carbon dioxide emission, if we can control to net zero, in 2055, then this is the global service average temperature looks like. It still even go up to 1.5 degrees C's limit. We need to do extra efforts, including not only carbon dioxide, but also other, like a methane, nitrous oxygen, or every other critical uh, greenhouse gas con con uh, emission. So that's why this is a very serious topic. And this is a Earth overshoot day. For humans' life today, if our human resources consumption for the year exceeds Earth's capacity to regenerate those resources that year, and that the perfect number is zero or negative number. That means carbon negative. And this is uh, indicating since 1970, the Earth's overshoot day or Earth's dead day is pulling ahead. Last year, 2018, pulling to uh, putting ahead 152 days ahead. 
That is uh, August 1st. If we maintain our lifestyle in this earth, then we need 1.7 earth to sustain our life. And this not probably not impress you very much. If you look at this chart, this is a overshoot day by country. And here America, the overshoot day coming up to March 15th. So in that kind of sense, America need 4.5 Earths to support our daily life. And most of the country need even more two Earths. And this is a mountain of trash. So all being are equal, you know. You can see that the animals and people are living together. And this is the mountains of plastics. And this is the sea of plastics. You know that the, because of the, the current of our Pacific Ocean, it forms a garbage patch or trash aisle in some area. The area, the size of the area is three times of France area. It's about 4.5 times of California area. Every hour, 1.6 million tons of waste enter into our ocean. And much of it is plastics. So you can see that the plastics pollution kills many animals, species, including seabirds, sea turtles. This is um, when you cut the, you know, the, the birds inside, and you can see so many plastics the bird ate. This is a 200. A 2050 projection. You see the. Uh, if we don't improve the waste control into most of our plastics into our ocean, then by 2050, the weight of plastics versus the fish in the sea will be about one to one. The process is even more than the fish in the sea. And this is uh, this map is showing our humanities uh, you know, uh, little bird tendency. It's man made debris. Currently orbits around our Earth. This is from University of one of the German. And this is another schematic chart from BBC News. You see that the space junk is another problem. More than 4,600 satellites orbits around our Earth. Earth. And more than 14,000 rocket parts and pieces are in our space junk. So the debris collisions, collision with spacecraft is very dangerous. And I start the CEO Lin showing this photo in the first opening speech we can see that the, the polar bear final place to seeking his food and this is not the skinny skinniest one and if they're really hungry 
they might eat, they might eat their own kind. So polar bears are the icons of our climate change. The problem is, who is the next? The biologist, naturalist, a very famous scientist, Charles Darwin. He has a theory on that. The natural selection is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent species that survives. It's the one most responsive to change, or the one most adapt adaptable to the change will survive. So that's why the I, uh, UN, IPCC, they launched a SDG, a Sustainable Development Goals, 17 Sustainable Development Goals. And we, we have seen this chart many times. And actually, we are looking for three visions, need to be eco, uh, balanced ecosystem. The first one is social progress. Second, environmental protection. The last one is economic growth. So we map those 17 SDG goals into these three visions. We can see most of the goals is, trying, is seeking the, the balance of social progress and environmental protection instead of economic growth. And what about our Tsuji missions? I have my, uh, some of my colleagues, I ask them to do the mapping. One of our Tsuji's four mission A footprints to do is those uh, Sustainable development goals. Actually, I have to pay my deepest respect to our master with his vision, with her vision. We can see our CGA missions and a four mission A footprints cover 17 sustainable development goals. I give one example, environmental protection. This is a Tsuji model. I would say this is a unique one in the world. I've never seen any other organization or party have this kind of concept and actions. We, our environment protection is actually contains two circulations. The first one is circular economy. Second is spiritual circulation. We our recycling recycling volunteers collecting those waste resources. And we do the recycling, sorting, become a, the material of recycled materials like a yarn, flax, to become the eco products, like our t-shirts, like my, many of our volunteers, our suits are all from PET bottles, recycled from, made from PET bottles. Then we turn into these eco products, a treasure, a cash, to support our charity mission our humanistic cultural missions. With our uh, Da Ai TV station, then we advocate those uh, become a, a pure stream in the mainstream media and turn into the influence globally. So this is kind of the symbol 
of infinity to keep our earth people sustainable. For example, our dye, dye technology on the company, the subsidy company of CG Foundation, they are doing a great job from recycle to recycle. You can see already many eco products coming up, like our clothes, scarf, blanket for relief, hanger, eyeglasses, many. And in the right, up, upper right photo is our blanket relief distribution to the victim of Campfire, California, North California. And more than that, even they are doing a lot of uh, development work. How to minimize the waste? So they pick up those uh, waste to make it become a wood plastic composite for the furniture, for the, for the wall, for the floor. That's what we call that recycle to recycle. And the other uh, organization is Jin Steel Salt Technology, campaigning the from trash to treasures. And we are familiar with this pretty much. This is a multiple purpose foldable bag for relief. Yeah, this is a chair. If we extended it fully, then it will become a bed. So in the right, uh, uh, lower right photo, this uh, foldable bed will become the bed for the medical emergency service. This is in the Philippines case. And more than that, they are still investing a lot of resources on how to translate those, the plastic for the candy, cookies, and waste paper to become an interlocking plastic payment like this. That's Suji's model. That's the unique part I've never seen in the in the other country in the world. Okay, then let's turn to uh, another subject. Each year, there is a um, World Economic Forum held in Switzerland, Davos. All those leaders, part, political leaders, industrial leaders, scholars, media, will come up this forum to is deliver their message. And in 2017, the China President Xi Jinping, he said, all signatories should stick it rather than walk away. He's talking about global trend, global trade agreement. You know, to his, the photo in, the, in his neighbor, right hand side. And what did Trump, Trump say? Trump say, what's the deal with global trade? We cannot have free trade talk for free. And what Macron said, we need a global cooperation, not wars. And the French President Macron, he just elected, so he uh, delivered a very neutral speech, especially the uh, the green ga greenhouse gas uh, control. So he said, I will shut down all coal-fired power stations by 2021. 2021. Among the participants of uh, this uh, 2018's uh, World Economic Forum, they have a survey. 
What is the biggest problem facing the world? The number one is climate change. Near half of the survey participants they choose climate change as their top concern. Second is conflict and wars, around 40%. The third one is inequality, including income and discrimination. The first two already cause force, forcefully displaced people around 70 million people in the world. Most of them become the refugee. And more than 1,300 scientists, they made a report. Science has proven that human are, humans are responsible for climate change. Around the, the, the participants of 2018's World Economic Forum, more than 90% participants agree on this statement. So the human is really the cause of those climate change. And what about this year's World Economic Forum? The Christina Lagarde, the, I, the head of INF, the International Monetary Fund, she said, I'm not going to give you an economic outlook. I'm going to start with one which is clearly on everybody's mind. That is climate change. The planet's average temperature has risen by one degree Celsius since late 19th century. And the CEO of World Bank, World Bank she said, climate change is not only happening, it is happening faster than we thought it would. It goes up to three degrees Celsius, we lose 25% of the G G GDP. And the cost of, in terms of suffering is unmeasurable. So even this is a economic forum, the leaders concern about the climate change because it impacts us very much. So this is a global risk report published in just two months ago, in January. This is a cover page. The follow by the, follow by the cover page, This already reveal, reveal what is our global risk. Is out of control. This chart shown the uh, <clears throat> the x axis, a horizontal axis, represents likelihood. There are five categories, including economic environmental, geopolitics, societal, technology, and the likelihood, and y-axis, no, vertical axis represents, once it happened, the impact force is like this. So upper right corner is our focus, our, we need to pay attention to. So I picked the, the top four one. I zoom it up. We can see clearly the number one is extreme weather events. The number two is failure of climate change mitigation and adaptions. The number three is natural disasters. The top three are all environmental issues. The number four is cyber, cyber attacks in the technology category. So environmental risks accounts for the three out of top four risks. 
The summary of global risk 2019 is uh, environmental risks continue to dominate the risk. Extreme weather, failure of mitigation plan, natural disaster. Geopolitical and geoeconomic tension are rising. Globalization of world economy versus, versus nationalism of world politics. Technology play a role in shaping the global risks. Like a cyber attack, fake news, data fraud, identity, identity theft, already uh, impact our societies. Uh, even the election of very important country. We are glad to see that the young people stood up for the planet. They are going to the street for the strike. Can advocate. We need to do some change. Among those play cards, the slogan showing, I pick up some, is very impressed to me. The first one is, the planet cannot sustain this system. The system change, not climate change. Human change, not climate change. The most impress, impressed one is, there is no planet B. No plan B. We have only one Earth. And this young girl, 16 years old, delivered a very impressed speech in many occasions. She delivered in World Economic Forum. She delivered speech in COP24. So she even has discussion with those leaders. Her left-hand side is Secretary General of United Nations. Right-hand side, a lady is a executive secretary of UN. So what did, he, what did she say? She said, I don't want your hope. I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to panic and act as if the house was on fire. Two years ago, this young girl was nominated for Nobel Peace Prize this year. So she remembered this girl. She's very hopeful to win the Nobel Peace Prize this year because three mem members of parliament from Norway, Norwegian, nominate this girl. That is a Nobel Prize coming from. Because we do nothing to hold climate change, it, it will be the cause of wars, conflict, and refugees. She said to the leaders and elites, you have run it. And we are running out of time. Our venerable master already provided us the answer to all those risks. We have four missions, charity in 1996, medicine in 1972, education in 1989, human, humanity in 1998, together with other footprint, environmental protection in 1990, international disaster relief in 19, studied in 1991, bone mineral donation studied in 1993, community volunteerism in 1996. All those eight footprints 
we have more than 20 years exercise. So now Ziji today started from Taiwan. We have 60, over 600 uh, offices or counter points in 58 countries. And our charity relief already uh, go up to 98 countries. We have more than 1 million volunteers around the world and 10 million supporters or donors around the world. Up to now, up to 2018, we have more than 16,000 free clinics in 50 countries. And our free clinic beneficiaries, more than 3 million person time. Just in 2018, last year, our volunteers activities, we have more than 20, 21,000 million person time. And societal beneficiary, more than 41 million person time. That's amazing, a, a big number. So our world top three problems, risks are climate change, conflict and war, inequality. The first one concerns environmental risk. Second, geopolitical risk. Third, economic risk. Solution, as I said, ethical eating, to become a vegetarian, ethical living, 6R, 5R plus rot. And we can use the degrad biodegradable materials, ethical mind, volunteerism, all in Suji Buddhism. I will skip this because my time is up. So what is the benefit of vegetarian? We know you are doctors, not only in health, but also in the environment. And what is the economic benefits? There are study in uh, March 2016 from uh, Marco Springman and his colleagues in the University of Oxford. If you look at the there are three types of vegetarian. One, the first one is a plant-based diet, vegetarian, and vegan. If we just look at the vegan one, this is a projection in 2050 in the United States. If we go to the vegan, then total seven, all economic benefits will be rich, 1060 30, uh, 1,636 billion US dollars. That's an amazing number. When I was a uh, uh, ground level manager, that's 20, 30 years ago, I like to interview those job seekers. I like to read their handwriting biography, because I can tell from their, their characters, their personnel, personality from their handwriting. I don't know how about English speaker when they writing. However, their study, you know, the signature also reveal one's person personality. If you have a very uh, like a left-hand side, not legible handwriting. You are very private, hard to read or understand. The right-hand side one is legible. You are more com competent and comfort comfortable with your own. And we can look at this. This is uh, the agreement of denuclearization between America and North 
Korea. The left hand one is Trump's signature. Right hand one is Kim Jong Un's signature. You can tell from their signature, showing reveal their personality. The left, the Trump one is kind of like build more walls. <laughs> Kim Jong Un one is like fire more missiles. I hope they have the genes aphorism on hands. If they really understand our venerable master's genius teaching, then it could become Trump's build more warmth, Kim's fire more missions for charity or something else. Summary. Global risks, the top concern one is extreme weather, which we can do something to mitigate for our next generation. Not natural disaster, much are man-made disasters. Secondly, sustainable development goals. In a very simple sentence, is better business Better war to all beings, not only human beings, to all beings. Climate change policy is not system change; it's us. It's human change. Act now to make our planet green again, great again. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you again to Brother Po and Yen. Um, it is clear from those statistics that we must band together soon, perhaps right away, to combat these issues in our environment before the ramifications are beyond our imagination. And for Tsuchi's part, we have implemented many programs and initiatives to protect our environment. And of course, there's dye technology, where we're constantly doing research and development to create eco-friendly products. So thank you again. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to our lead attendees for the next part of our program.